Okay. So it's recording now. Okay. And we can just <laughs> enter the scene and begin. <laughs> um, all right. <laughs> I, I can I, just introduce the piece a little bit. Yeah, no, yeah, that's good. I was, uh, I, I do this thing where I'm like, we're at Public Space One. Okay. And, um, it's February 2012. I'm with Mary Lobby. Is that how you, is that yeah. kind of, okay. mm -hmm. um, And we're talking, uh, I'm talking with her about her installation called Like a Snow Hill in the Air. And I'll, I'll let you okay. intru introduce. Yeah. Sounds good. I'll, I'll enter with the, the title actually, explaining the title. Um, so it's, it's a passage from um, Melville's Moby Dick, um, which is kind of where this this piece came came out of it's just kind of I was using the narrative of Moby Dick as this kind of stepping stone to, to make this piece um, and, and mainly what I was interested about that story was the drama that was kind of created around the absence of this main figure the, the whale and um, and so you know a lot of my work and my, my paintings are about um, that relationship between absence and presence and, and so I wanted to kind of draw from that um, that interaction between Ahab and the whale. Um, and so, you know, I'm thinking a lot about hiding places and the, the, uh, the activity of hiding and then searching and, and the way in the, in the novel there's um, that the kind of energy that's around searching kind of jumps between being playful at some times but also being really grave and, and very serious in other times. And so those kinds of contradictions are really important to my work. Um, and so, you know, in this piece, um, a lot of the kind of like imagery that I'm using, especially the painting on the wall, is um, very much like my paintings. Um, and so I was, you know, kind of interested in that relationship between being a painter, you know, kind of confined to the frame, and then how can that, you know, relate to kind of installation and the, the kind of sculptural pieces that come in. Yeah. I saw um, one piece, I was looking at your website, and uh, you have a piece called Hiding, mm -hmm. Hiding Place, mm -hmm. and, that, and it's, it's, it's essentially this, right. this with, on a white canvas, mm -hmm. so, um, and I, I guess I'm interested in like how, how that, how it's different when it's on a canvas, mm -hmm. as opposed to when it's in the corner of this, because it, Right. Room. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I think um, you know. I mean, because I'm you know because I'm a painter, I'm always I'm always dealing with these issues of um, evolution, and I'm especially interested in, in the in, especially in this piece creating this kind of facade. Um, and so I guess in when when it goes onto a wall, I was you know I was hoping that that would somehow play into and make that idea of illusion more com complex. I guess whereas in a painting, it's yeah, it, it is much different. Um, but also in the painting, I was really still aware of that, that frame, the mm -hmm. kind of you know, format of, of the edges. Yeah. Um, are there, do you want to talk about like this centerpiece at all? Like, like yeah. is, is this a, a painting that was how does this figure into anything, or is it is it made just for this wall, or or was it something that existed that you you built around? Or? Yeah, it, it was kind of it was intended for this piece, and so you know the frame is just made out of very simple you know balsa wood, and then kind of painted as if it were wood, and so the the whole piece was supposed to be a part of this this kind of space that I'm creating, and the the actual painting is this um, kind of abstraction of of the sperm whale, which is you know Moby Dick. Um, and, and in the book, there are you know a number of references to the whale um, as a kind of landscape. So that's where the you know the snow hill, or the, the white hooded phantom, and, and I, I was kind of interested in that really simple play and abstraction, um, and the kind of poetry around that. Um, and so it kind of yeah it kind of becomes this um, this other kinds of kind of like dreaming space in, in the piece. Um, Another really interesting thing is that in the book, um, you know, he talks a lot about all of the misrepresentations of the whale. Um, 
And so I was kind of, you know, really excited about that and was looking at some etchings of, of whaling and, and things like that in the story. Um, how, how about the, how about the, the little it's pedestal? Like, yeah, so, so the pedestal, it was, it was kind of a, this was kind of a challenging part of the piece for me. Um, there, you know, I, throughout making this, although it's not related, I was thinking a lot about this experience I had as a kid going to the Holocaust Museum in DC. And I remember being really, really like emotionally impacted by the stillness of the objects you know, in the museum and the way that lighting and, and having this kind of, um, I don't know, I guess how, how an empty object can kind of have so much meaning and so I wanted, or power, and so I wanted to, to bring that, that in somehow. Um, and so the table, you know, I did not build a table, it was kind of just bought at a resale store and I wanted to, um, you know, paint it as, as in the same language that I am with all the other sculptural elements. And so it kind of, you know, it kind of starts to look like a stool even, or, um, you know, someone had told me that it reminded them of some kind of like offering a table. Um, and so mainly, you know, I, I was really going after this kind of um, empty table that was very still. So it was, it was kind of, you know, it's very different from, from my usual work, so. Mm -hmm. Do you, is it um, different because it comes out off the, I mean, do, do you have this element in a lot of your other, like you have a show coming up, mm -hmm. um, are you, are you going to have sculptural elements as part of that? Um, I am, show? yeah, and so the, this kind of sculptural thing, that's, that's a new mm -hmm. thing that I've been doing, but it's, it's kind of something that I'm really trying to um, follow, you know, follow that impulse. Um, and so, yeah, my, um, the show that's, that's coming up in March, will kind of be this uh, confrontation of the paintings on the wall and then um, you know some kinds of modifications or augmentations of the actual space that um, that kind of echo the paintings in a way mm -hmm. so I have some you know some more floor pieces and then um, yeah I you know one thing that I really like about the pairing between you and, and Kristen is and I think I don't know if I told this to you or, or Kristen, but how how you're you're kind of I don't know if you're doing similar things, but you're like this is is so dramatic in one way where you've turned this room into kind of a, a painting, like mm -hmm. like this room is a canvas for a painting, mm -hmm. and like right. here's the painting and, and the rest frames it, mm -hmm. um, and then hers is kind of like going into that in a way, like she has a whole room right. that that you kind of with this pink color, mm -hmm. like you're, you're engulfed in immediately. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a really interesting mm -hmm. pairing because they're very, you, your work is somewhat similar in, in themes, mm -hmm. um, maybe just sort of, you know, on the surface level, mm -hmm. um, but also, but the, but the way, it's a nice way to think about how we present work in, in, mm -hmm. in general and like, is it something that you are surrounded by, or is it something that you you stand in? Right. And I think like this is just a really good example of playing with kind of both those notions and and, and this hints at mm -hmm. at that in, in one way, but also works as as a piece in this. Yeah, I really I really enjoyed having like seeing these two kind of um, projects somehow, you know, merge, and, you know, she's coming from a, a printmaking background, and so, and even more, you know, I think she's, you know, done more installation stuff, and I'm coming from a very, almost, like, rigid painting background, so it's nice to see where, um, where the pieces kind of converge and then, um, you know, move away from each other, and it's also, it's been really nice working in here and having this, like, even in some of my photographs, there's this pink glow, uh, yeah. coming, and so yeah. I really, there's something really interesting about that. That, yeah, that's yeah. that's funny. Mm -hmm. That's funny. Um, this, you know, I, hopefully we'll have. I don't know. How, I I do simple editing. Like I'm like kind of one take. Is mm -hmm. is is it? But um, we should include uh, kind of more detailed pictures about this because it's really you know it's nice the the texture you have on this on these corner pieces and and just this wood border and. Um, mm -hmm. 
So we'll, we'll have to include some images somehow with, with that detail. Mm -hmm. um, what uh, you were you did something with juxtapose, or you were in juxtapose? Yes. What, what was? How did that come about? I you know I'm not sure. I actually didn't know uh, that I was reviewed in that. Um, so it was just a review on their their blog okay. on, online. Someone had actually had just told me about it. That's so. that seems but, big. I yeah, mean, it was it was a nice thing to stumble upon. So how did they do? You, how did they come I about? Have, or how? I have no idea. Um, I've heard, I know I thought maybe it was coming from I was in New American Paintings a couple years ago, okay. so I thought maybe it was that. Um, but I've, I've also been on some other blogs like Boom. I don't know if you've heard of it. Um, Just through. I thought. Yeah, yeah and then you. from there I don't I don't know. Um, I also I had a review in the Monarch Review, which is another online-based magazine mm -hmm. based out of Seattle. So there's kind of these small things that happen in the you know in the world of the internet, which is weird. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea how things you know people come across things yeah. anymore. Yeah. So what? Um, you're, you're 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 doing your MFA show in March, mm -hmm. and what's what's next? Well, <laughs> I'm actually, I'm not sure yet. That's the thing about the third year in yeah. school. Um, I am applying to residencies and some smaller teaching gigs. Um, but I, I really want to have a, a year, you know, where I can kind of, you know, settle in and, and make, you know, just you know, kind of focus on my work mm -hmm. outside of academia, yeah. which I'm really excited about. And yeah. kind of, you know. Onward and upward, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> are you gonna Are you gonna stay in Iowa City? Or? Yes, I'll be here. Are you? Another, yeah. Cool. Cool. That's that's always yes. good news. Yes, <laughs> I like I like it here a lot. Yeah. So. I um, you know, I I was when I went to school my third year. I well, I got the Iowa Arts Fellowship for my okay. last two years, not my first two, and now a three-year program. So usually you get that for the first two years, and then you spend your third year teaching or something like that. And I didn't because I was manager the first. Darkroom manager, mm -hmm. my, that was my TA gig. Mm -hmm. um, but that really did something to me mentally where I was like, you know, they believe in my work enough to make me do work. And I, and I think it was kind of, maybe it was foolish on some levels at the time, but I was like, I'm not going to prepare for my time outside of school. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to like fully envelop mm -hmm. myself in making stuff while I'm here. Yeah. And, and it was, it was pretty shocking. Yeah. <laughs> like when I graduated, I was like, oh, I'm done now. Yeah. And what am I going to do? But yeah. in, a, in a lot of ways, I spent my last year collaborating with people and enjoying um, being in that community. And right. I think it, it made sense for what I'm, what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I didn't set myself up well to teach, but that will, you know, there's other ways to mm -hmm. go about it. Mm -hmm. And it's a long process. Yeah. So. I always appreciate like hearing people who are working while they're in school yeah. on 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 enjoying that community right. and making stuff and, and you know I, I there were a fair amount of people who were just worried about getting um, you know their CV right. filled out and moving on to the next thing before they're even out but of this. It's thing. It's really time consuming to yeah. do applications and to yeah. you know and and I really wanted to have a, a really a third year. Yeah. In school, so. yeah. that's nice. Yeah, that's good. Um, well, that's 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 probably good. I think okay. I think we yeah. covered it. Unless you want to say anything no, else. No, I think that's great. Yeah. Okay. Congratulations. Yes. And Thanks again so good. much for giving yeah, me this yeah. space. To no, no, no. Like, it's great. it's our pleasure to, mm -hmm. to and you all. Uh, you know, we have a, a fair amount of uh, like community people who who come by mm -hmm. and, and they just like what we do on some. Mm -hmm level that's not of the art world or of and and one one in particular who's who's fairly I think you met him. I think you met Brandon. I did, did you met I did Brandon? Him, and, and yeah. he was like blown away by this and he's like, this is good stuff. Like this is I like this stuff. And and you know he'll he's the one who will be like, I don't like this show or, right. or like, you know, like yeah. this doesn't do anything for me. I don't know about this. Yeah. But he he you know, so you got his his compliment, yeah, and that's, um, that's a that's a big thing. Mm -hmm. So, congratulations! Thanks, <laughs> Thanks Mary. <Okay. laughs> oh, good. We're um, the. Back